The next question I'd like to ask you, Ambassador, is moving on from uh, Mr. Bajpayee to Mr. Modi. And uh, what would you say are the changes and the continuity, the contours of foreign policy? Okay, let me give you a short answer. Total continuity, but plenty of change. Continuity because all the principles that I mentioned that Vajpayee had started, not a single one of them was overturned. It seamlessly went from Vajpayee to Manmohan Singh to Modi. So Modi foreign policy is based on the pillars that Mr. Vajpayee had set up. But Mr. Modi also has taken a lot of very brilliant uh, diplomatic initiatives which have enriched India's foreign policy. First of all, you will say, has he made any change in doctrine? Now, right from the beginning, uh, Modi has said, I don't believe in doctrines. I am guided by only one doctrine, that is India's national interest. So, we have no doctrinal uh, declarations by this government. It is entirely based on situational uh, reactions and diplomatic practices and initiatives that Prime Minister Modi has taken. Okay. I will refer to uh, but four very uh, major diplomatic initiatives that Mr. Modi has taken. Now, one certainly would be that the, yeah, one was that he, instead of, uh, uh, of uh, the uh, principles that uh, Vajpayee had, had proclaimed, he uh, turned out to be the biggest realist amongst the Indian Prime Ministers. If there is one cautelia amongst our Prime Ministers, I would say it was Modi in terms of his strategic thinking. So, uh, first of all, he uh, dealt with the uh, with, with our neighborhood and he took a decisive decision on Pakistan. Pakistan which had been comfortable in thinking that it could use terrorism against India without any retaliation because Pakistan had nuclear weapons. This was what had held the hands of most of his predecessors. Modi decided to call the Pakistani bluff and then we know what happened after uh, at, at the Balakot surgical strikes, Mr. Modi took a decisive uh, view that irrespective of Pakistan having nuclear weapons, we cannot continue this blackmail forever and India will strike back and take the consequences. So that was there. The second one was something that is a throwback to the Nehru period. Because Prime Minister Nehru had gathered the developing countries, the non-aligned countries and had created institutions like NAM. Yes. And uh, the developing countries were also uh, had their, uh, their platform in what was then known as GATT and yes. discussed their economic issues and so on. Now, <clears throat> the, this time, uh, Mr. Modi has decided that India can't uh, confine itself to its neighborhood. India has a wider audience, has a global audience. And India will speak to this wider audience, for this wider audience. First, he decided to speak to this wider audience. Now, no prime minister I know of has spent so much time visiting so many countries in the world. You know, he has crisscrossed the globe several times. He had gone to remote areas in Latin America, in Asia, in Africa. And he has gone to even the remote islands of South Pacific, which had never seen an Indian Prime Minister before. Why? Because he thinks that there are groups of countries that have no voice. They need a powerful voice to speak for them. So this is the concept of the Global South. And the Global South are not the poor developing countries of Nehru's time. The Global South has what is called the emerging economies. 
and they are powerful countries the economies are growing and they they are global players so the g22 is actually the platform for the global global south and while india is chairman prime minister modi is taking full advantage of this platform to recognize the g20 and india's role in it as the voice of the global south okay now i spoke about the neighborhood yes the neighborhood has also undergone a change because of mr modi's initiative pakistan was okay he dealt with the situation and dealt with it decisively but we have seen that under a succession of prime ministers the concept of the neighborhood has changed mrs gandhi uh made india the uh, paramount power in south south asia this was our neighborhood in those days narsimha rao came and with look east policy extended our neighborhood to southeast asia that was our neighborhood south asia and southeast asia uh vajpayee government stretched it a little more pushed it towards japan and australia but what mr modi has done is that he's got an axed east policy that takes him all the way east and he's got a axed act look west policy which takes him all the way west now the act the look west policy is not so well recognized but mind you india is a recognized player in the geopolitics of west asia because it has maintained strong relations particularly under modi with countries like the saudi arabia the uae egypt turkey and israel yes. these are the major players and we have relationship with them okay so when mr when you look at india's neighborhood under mr modi in his words it stretches from the east coast of africa to the west coast of the united states this the indo pacific is india's new neighborhood neighborhood has expanded has expanded yeah. okay and finally i'll say there there are many other initiatives to took but finally i'll say that he has put india on a trajectory and this is important to understand ambitions have expanded mrs gandhi was once asked by a reporter what kind of power will india be and she gave a very ambiguous reply she said india will be a different power you can take whatever meaning that that has in a uh, vajpayee's time his ambition was to make india a global power right mr modi wants india to be a great power and so this is the concept of the vishwa guru we are not going to be just a global player because there are many of them we are going to be a unique global player will be a great power and so i think with his diplomatic initiatives mr modi has created a a, a new spread for india's foreign policy so um i would i would think for the kind of energy and enthusiasm he has put into the pursuance of india's foreign policy i would think mr modi is also a path breaker amongst the prime ministers uh thanks ambassador you have uh, brilliantly brought out uh, the salient uh, milestones that uh, the policy has covered had seen during uh, atal ji's time and uh, now during modi 1 and modi 2 uh, this brings us to the end of uh, this video and in the next video we would uh, see uh, india and us in greater detail thank you